Hi there. In this project, we'll do our third example of implementing a circuit based on a circuit schematic. The main difference between this project and the first two circuit implementation projects is that the circuit in this project uses the analog discovery to create a source with a voltage of greater than 5 volts. That doesn't really change the basic approach much, but we do need to be creative about how we apply ground. Here's a schematic of the circuit we want to implement. We're going to measure the current out of the voltage source and the voltage across this 10 kilo ohm resistor. For this circuit, let's first figure out how to implement our source. We want an 8 volt source, but if we use the analog discovery, we only have access to voltage sources with a maximum of 5 volts. Our solution to this is going to be to add two voltages together that sum to 8 volts. So let's convert the previous circuit to this circuit, which has two sources, V1 and V2. Now, this voltage here is V2 volts above this voltage. And this voltage here is V1 volts above this voltage. So the two of these together have a voltage difference, which is V1 plus V2. Now we just need to use the voltage sources on the analog discovery to sum to 8 volts. Remember that the analog discovery sources all share a common ground. So we're stuck with putting ground here. Now let's arbitrarily claim that I'll use 3 volts for V1 and 5 volts for V2. This node now is 5 volts below ground. I need to apply negative 5 volts here if we use the analog discovery. We can do this either with a waveform generator set to negative 5 volts or with V- minus on the voltage instrument. I'll choose V-. minus. This node here is 3 volts above ground, so we need to apply positive 3 volts here. We can use either channel on the waveform generator to do this. I'll arbitrarily pick channel 1. So this is the circuit we're going to actually implement. Now we can finally identify nodes on the schematic. The voltage measurement, as usual, doesn't affect our selection of nodes, but in order to measure current, we'll need to insert our ammeter between the source and the 10 kilo ohm resistor. So our final circuit, with our measurements included, looks like this. Now we can identify our circuit nodes. I'll call this node A. This will be node B. Node C will be here. This entire bottom area is node D. And node E will be ground. Now there's kind of a weird thing about this circuit. Node E is ground. Nothing is connected to node E except the sources. Since ground is set inside the analog discovery, we don't actually have to implement node E on our breadboard. None of the components, the resistors or the measurements, are directly connected to ground. Node E is inside the analog discovery. Now let's choose the nodes on the breadboard. As usual, I'll insert connectors in the rows I choose to keep my place and make it easier for me to find my nodes later. This will be node A, node B, node C, and node D. Now I'll connect my power supplies. V minus, the white wire, goes in a hole that's in the node D row. The channel 1 of the AWG, the yellow wire, connects to node A. And ground doesn't get connected anywhere. Now I'll connect the resistors. One 10 kilo ohm resistor goes between nodes B and C. The other one connects nodes C and D. Finally, I'll connect my measurements. The ammeter goes between nodes A and B. I'll use channel 1 of the analog discovery's voltmeter to measure the voltage V, so I'll connect the 1 plus terminal, the orange wire, to node C, and the 1 minus terminal, the orange wire with the white stripe, to node D. The voltage instrument, waveform generator, and voltmeter are already open. I'll turn on V minus to apply the 5 volt source. In the waveform generator, I've set the voltage to 3 volts. I'll click on run AWG1 to apply that voltage. My measured voltage is about 4 volts, and my measured current is about 0.4 milliamps. This is close to what I calculated that these values should be, so it looks like I implemented the circuit correctly.